presenting the adventures of Jungle Jim. The adventures of Jungle Jim are dramatized for radio from the full-color comic supplement that comes to you with your Hearst Sunday newspaper. Last week, we left Jungle Jim trying to persuade the captain to change the course of the Manchu and proceed down the Java coast to avoid the pirate blockade. Kolu, Jungle Jim's boy, discovers someone running from Jungle Jim's cabin door. He follows the man to the radio room where he is knocked unconscious by Meekers. Baroni, Meekers, and Matley bind and gag Kolu and hide him in a closet. Knowing that Smithers intends to sink the Manchu, bearing no lives in doing so, they decide to set fire to the boat themselves, then make their getaway aboard the dory that Jungle Jim and Kolu had planned to use. Meekers goes down into the hold of the ship to start a fire, while Baroni goes to make sure that all the lifeboats are useless. Glovers, one of the crew, has followed Meekers below. He grapples with Meekers as he starts the fire. Meekers pulls a gun on Glovers and fires. Glovers drops, pretending to be hit. But as Meekers rushes past him, Glovers tackles him and knocks the gun out of his hand. Not so fast, you murdering rat. Wait till I get my hands on that gun. Hey, or... What's going on here? Drop that gun, Meekers. Oh, Quick. yeah. Nice work, Clark. He almost had me. Yeah, he almost had me, too. What's it all about? This swine here tried to fry us all. I followed him, but I was too late to stop him. If I'd have known that, I would have finished him instead of only winging him. Come on, get on the job before this fire gets away from us. Right you are. Ah, that's got it. Meekers is still out. You got him in the shoulder. Might have been better for all of us, but I'd have it right through the heart. Maybe we'll have that pleasure yet. Now I'll call the bridge and let them know what happened. In the meantime, Motley, having written a fake message for the captain, goes to the bridge. He arrives just in time to hear the bosun talking on the ship's phone. A fire in the old? Stand by with Clark down there. I'll send some hands below. Hold on a minute, Motley. Your pal Mika seems to have been up to something. Mika's ain't no pal of mine. I ain't seen him in quite a while. Maybe and maybe not. But we'll soon find out. All hands below. There's a fire in the old. Now, where's the captain, Bosun? You don't know anything about this fire, do you, Matt? What would I know about it? I've been in the radio room where I belong. I have an important message here for the captain. Where is he? He was in Bradley's cabin. But by now, he's probably below. You better get back to the radio room. All right. You take this to the captain. Hmm, someone's trying to get us. Must be Smithers. Yeah, let's see. Oh, doggone the luck. They stopped sending. Well, I gotta work fast to save my hide. Let's see. I'll untie that Hindu. Where is it? Come. Now, he'll remember that I did keep Miggers from plugging him. He'll remember that. Oh, coming too. Where, where's Dwan? What you do, Madley? You mean to say you don't remember? Why? And it tossed you over. It wasn't for me. Oh, I remember. You listen at Tuan's door. Me follow. Yeah, sure, that's it. I was at Bradley's door. I had a message I was going to give the captain. When I spotted Baroni, that's why I ducked. Didn't want him to see me. I did not think you'd speak truth. If I ain't, would I be fool enough to set you free? I don't want any part of those guys. How are they? They set the ship on fire. But Colo see you talk with Baroni and Meeker. If I hadn't kept in with them, they'd have plugged me. Why? I was only trying to find out what they were up to. You didn't hear me making any plans, did you? Kolu no could hear. Too much wind. Kolu see you. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Now, they were for stealing the dory and pulling up, leaving the ship to sink. They figured it'd put them in good with Brand again. Kolu, thank heaven you're all right. Where have you been? Kolu here, all time, asleep. Asleep? I can explain that, Mr. Bradley. Gun butt put Kolu to sleep, Tuan. What do you know about this, Matley? That's just what I was going to explain. All right, go ahead, and it better be good. Well, Baroni and Meekers figured on setting fire to the Manchu and then sneaking off in the dory. I tried to talk them out of it. They were going to shoot Kolu and toss him overboard, but I stopped them. you got to believe me, Mr. Bradley. Is this true, Kolu? It is true that Meekers want to kill me, Tuan. Then Matley say, don't shoot, you fool. That is all I remember. You can see for yourself, Mr. Bradley. First chance I had, I untied Kolu and brought him to. I wouldn't have done that if I, if I were in with Baroni and Meekers, would I? You never can tell, Matley. Well, I mean it, Mr. Bradley. What? Wasn't it me that tipped you off to Smith when that boat came alongside? Mm, that's one point in your favor. And didn't I pick up a message to the ghost and take it straight to the captain? Why, even the bosun will back me up. I was with him when the fire started. You certainly protect yourself in the trenches, don't you, Matley? 
What message are you talking about? Oh, there you are, Mr. Bradley. Is the fire completely out, Captain? Yeah, the fire's out right enough. We just caught Peroni putting the lifeboats out of commission. I had him put an iron. If it keeps up, there's no telling who'll be next. I had Colo here tied up. But Matley kept him from killing him. He did, eh? Well, Meekus was shot, but not seriously. The crew uh, must Baroni up a bit when they found out what he was up to. You better have both of them carefully watched from now on. It was a mistake not to have them in irons all along. Right you are, Mr. Bradley. Uh, here, take a look at this message Matley left with the bosun for me. Hmm. Smithers calling ghost fleet all set to strike. Manchu. Following your orders, repeat Smithers. So you picked this up, eh, Matley? Yes, sir. The same as I did the other one. Well, Matley, this seems to bear out your story. Colo. Yes, Juan. Go down to the cabin and finish the packing. Load everything into the dory. Supplies, ammunition, everything. We'll be leaving in the morning. Yes, Juan. How's the weather, Captain? Still blowing, Mr. Bradley. The wind shifted a bit. Looks like a squall. Change the course. We're leaving the shipping lane right now. Head down the Java coast. You know, Mr. Bradley, I'm beginning to think that's the wisest thing to do. Matley, you stick to your post here. Let me know everything that happens. Understand? Okay, Mr. Bradley. Oh, by the way, how long ago did you pick up this message? Oh, about, uh, let's see, let's say about an hour, half hour. Yeah, that's it, uh, between an hour and a half hour. You took quite a while relaying it. Well, it's like I said, Mr. Bradley, I went right out... Forget it. Captain, we still have time to beat the ghost. By the time they look for us, we'll be well off the shipping lane. I'll go along the bridge with you. Push me around, will you, Mr. Jungle Jim Bradley? Let you know everything that happens, eh? Wait till I tell the ghost about that crack. Yes, yes, Manchu. Calling ghost. Yes, yes, Manchu. Calling ghost. <laughs> Early the following morning in southwest Borneo at a well-concealed dock, a submarine is waiting. Two trusted lieutenants of Harvey Brant, Smithers, and Limpy are completing their final preparation. According to that chart I've been working on, Limpy, I figure the Manchu ought to be around 110 degrees west by about 5 south. Ah, try to contact the last night I was blue in the face. Well, don't worry about that. With this chart, you won't have any trouble spotting her. Now, Grogan and Petty will be aboard the motorboat, see? It's going to look like we're out fishing. I'm going to be inside the cabin at the two-way radio. When they catch sight of the Manchu, they'll give me the high sign, and I'll do the rest. What about Medley, Maroney, and Meekers? You heard the orders. No lives spared. As soon as we see her, we'll let her have it. All right. Well, set our signals. Before I go down, I'll call you. K-7 to Smithers. You want to try the sets out? Yeah, go ahead. We can't take a chance on anything going wrong. Rogan, you better warm up the motor. We'll be shoving off right away. Okay, boss. All right, K-7. What are you waiting for? You got me? I got you. He's all set here. Well, let's get going then. And remember, no slip-ups. Later that morning, aboard the Manchu, unaware that the ghost pirate submarine is searching up and down the waters for them, the captain speaks with Jungle Jim. I'm glad I acted on your suggestion, Mr. Bradley. Not only did we avoid the pirate blockade, but we sidestepped the storm, too. And the barometer is rising. Beg pardon, Captain, but that Baroni bloke, he's crying about how he's got to see you right away. You can tell Baroni for me, Bosun, that he'll be a whole lot better off if he doesn't see me or I him. Aye, aye, sir. Everything ready to on. Food, water, ammunition... A machine gun in Dory. Where'd the machine gun come from, Colo? Meekers and Baroni leave it there, I think. Well, that's what I call downright accommodating of them. <laughs> By the way, Captain, if I were you, I'd keep a pretty close eye on our friend Matley. Oh, I don't think he's very dangerous, Mr. Bradley. And he did pick up that message. Maybe so. But I'm wondering if his alibi wasn't just a little too good. Well, with this wind, we ought to make the Borneo coast in no time. That puts us one up on the ghost. I hope so. And I hope your luck will hold. Thank you, Captain. And so long. So long, Mr. Bradley. And remember, when Lee Wong asks why I let you and Kolu leave the man too... <laughs> Don't worry, Captain. I'll know what to tell him. All set, Kolu? Yes, go on. All right, here we go. <laughs> Late 
Late afternoon, the pirate submarine has cruised up and down the Borneo coast without any sign of the Manchu. Now she contacts the small motorboat where Smithers, tense and alert, sits in the tiny cabin. A7 to Smithers. A7 to Smithers. All right, this is Smithers. Anything new? Nothing stern. Not even a whisper smoke. How about there must be, I tell you. She should have hit there hours ago. Can't help it, Chief. We can't find her. Listen, Limpy, you've got to find her. Maybe they got wise and turned back. Jungle Jim don't do no turning back. He's on the man, too, and he's on the way. Now, get this. Have you cruised out of the shipping lane? No. You told me before that... Never that... mind what I told you before. Here's what I'm telling you now. Run down the Java coast. You might pick her up somewhere along there. And here's something else I'm telling you. We gotta get that ship... Will the submarine find the man too? Will Motley succeed in double-crossing his pals? What does Baroni want to tell the captain? And will Jungle Jim and Kolu in their small dory make the coast of Borneo safely? Be sure to listen in next week to learn the answers to these questions. Don't miss the next thrilling episode of The Adventures of Jungle Jim. The Adventures of Jungle Jim are dramatized from the full-color action pictures to be found in the Comic Weekly, the big comic supplement distributed each week with your Hearst Sunday newspaper. The world's greatest array of humor and adventure, together with all the famous characters who live in the world of full-color action pictures, are to be found in the Comic Weekly. Follow the humorous adventures of Jigs and Maggie, of Barney Google, the Little King, Toots and Casper and Blondie, as well as the thrilling adventures of Flash Gordon and Jungle Jim. They'll all be waiting for you in your copy of next Sunday's Comic Weekly with your Hearst newspaper. And remember, next week at the same time, same station, the further thrilling radio adventures of Jungle Jim. <laughs> Thank you.